We have reached a point in time where the technological progress in the smartphone industry has stagnated for a while. There is little innovation, and all phones have started to look extremely similar. In the earlier days, there used to be a lot of choices and varieties available in the smartphone market from phones with sliding QWERTY keyboards to flip phones. Nowadays, every phone is a thin rectangular box with nearly identical design, specification, and features. This happens in pretty much all technology-based industries. Once a new product has been discovered, there are a lot of comparatively easy problems to improve upon in the initial years. And, several companies attempt to solve those problems differently and thus create a variety of choices. But after that period, all products in that industry tend to get consolidated into similar products. This is because one method of solving problems might be more efficient than the other ones. Thus, all competitors get forced into choosing that method for their products too. The standardization of products might also happen due to legal reasons or other market forces like consumers expecting a certain set of standard features by default in all products in an industry. Like, for example, who would want to buy a smartphone without the Wi-Fi feature in 2018? This happened in the car industry in the 70s, the laptop market in 2008, and now it is happening in the smartphone industry. This is why all cars or laptops kind of look the same and have similar features except for comparatively minor improvements over the years. The technological progress after this stage happens only when there is a breakthrough related to that industry, and when it happens, there will be bursts of progress, but again, it will slow down until there is another burst of progress. In such industrial conditions, the companies tend to play it safe by not trying to innovate too much, as there is a risk that making a lot of changes all at once might not be appreciated by the customers. So they prefer to make small iterative changes to their existing market-proven products. One company that tried to make too much innovation in the smartphone industry in recent years was LG, which launched many unique products but failed to attain profitability. They have now changed their company strategy, and have just announced that their next products will just be making marginal improvements like the LG G7 or the LG V30 Thin Q. So, I want to attempt to create the perfect design for a phone which is both technologically and commercially feasible, but has some unique set of features in order to spur up new ideas to rejuvenate innovation in this industry. If enough people like these designs, then it is possible that manufacturers may make this phone a reality. When a company launches a phone, it tries to target their product to a particular market niche. So, let's define our target audience. 1. High-end smartphone market. 2. People who want a bezel-less screen, which is the trend nowadays. 3. Enthusiasts who consider the camera as an important feature. 4. And those who want a unique-looking phone. So, let's begin designing this phone. The expected specs of a flagship-grade smartphone have become so identical that it is no longer a differentiating factor. The phone we are designing will also have the highest-end processor, 6GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, and other obvious stuff. Most phones these days sacrifice the battery capacity in order to make their phones as thin as possible, but I think most people will appreciate a bigger battery instead of that 1mm reduced thickness. After all, what is the point of having a smartphone if you cannot use it properly for the entire day without being concerned that your battery will run out if you use your phone more? So, our phone will have at least a 4400mAh battery, and it can be done without sacrificing the thickness. This is certainly doable, as Xiaomi Mi Mix had a 4400mAh battery. We want big displays, so we made phones with bigger displays. But now our phones have become so big that it has effectively killed the tablet industry. Our need for big displays has still not stopped yet, and we continue to want bigger and bigger displays. But our phones have already become so big that it no longer fits in our pockets properly. So, the manufacturers have started to explore various methods to solve this problem, from making a dual screen phone to trying to make a flexible display. But, at the current stage, the most common method has been to attempt to create a near bezel-less display like the Essential Phone or the iPhone X. However, there are several problems in these top-notch phones, particularly the notch. There are several essential sensors on the front side of the phone like the speaker for the earphone, the proximity sensor, and more importantly the front camera which all occupies at least some space, thus creating an eyesore of a notch. Some people like it, some people hate it, while many others try to adjust to this minor annoyance. We want a 6.5 inch fully bezel-less display with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio in our phone, so we will explore a completely different method in dealing with the problem of the notch. Let's just remove the front camera, proximity sensor, and earphone from the front side of the phone and dedicate the entire space for the display. There you have it, the problem of the notch has been solved. If removing the headphone jack is a new feature, then this should also be a feature, right? Just kidding, I have not really removed any of the features from the front side of the phone. Instead, what I did was to relocate it to the back side of the phone. Let me explain. Unlike other phones which might have 2, 3, 5, or 16 cameras, 
This phone will only have one camera, which is kept on a rotatable flap on the rear of the phone. There will also be a rotatable hinge at the top of the phone, similar to the hinge which you see in a flip phone. So, you can just flip up the camera if you want to take a selfie. The earphone and proximity sensor are also placed on the bottom of this flap. So if you want to attend a call, all you need to do is flip up this flap and start speaking. This earphone will also act like a secondary speaker. So if you're watching a movie, you can hear sound from one speaker at the bottom of the phone and one rotatable speaker at the top, thus creating the perfect stereo effect. This phone will have a fingerprint scanner because it is just so much more effective than the face unlocked which is being promoted by some newer phones. However, if you want to unlock your phone using your face, then that is also implementable with this system by flipping up the camera. Some of you might be thinking that this hinge might become a structural weak point in this phone, or that implementing such a hinge could be expensive. Technically, yes, the hinge is a weak point if you think of it like that, but Nokia and other companies have successfully made good hinges in the smartphones of the past era. And, if you're looking at structural weakness, then many of the flagship phones nowadays have their backsides made of glass, which cracks after a single drop. Now, talking about the cost, it might actually be significantly cheaper to implement this than what you might have thought. You save money on the front camera and other sensors. Nowadays, due to the selfie craze, many consumers want an expensive, high-end camera sensor on both sides of the phone. So, by removing that front camera, you might actually save some money. And the hinge itself doesn't cost much. In fact, a phone from Intex named AquaTwist had already implemented a rotatable camera to save money and the price of that phone was less than $80 and they did it over two years ago, although they did not use this opportunity to implement the rest of the features I mentioned. There are certainly few other methods for achieving a bezel-less display, but this idea of a foldable flap seems to be the easiest way to do so, at least with the current generation of technology. We will discuss the improvements in the camera of the phone in part two of this video, as it got so detailed that it deserved a separate video. So, overall, this concept phone can achieve the following set of features. One, the biggest screen in the smallest form factor. Two, the best camera in a phone. Three, the best battery size in the flagship phone market. Four, unique style. If you like this design and want the manufacturers to make this phone, then spread this video. If this video gets enough attention, the manufacturers will be compelled to make this phone. Thanks for watching, and you have unlocked the opportunity to be one of the first subscribers of this channel.